In this video we're going to talk about the head. Now most amateur golfers tend to get lost in this. They tend to see some advice where somebody will say keep the head still, which seems very logical, and then other times you'll see a pro that will say move your head. So rotate your head through so that it helps you turn through the ball, which again seems really logical. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about a video on how simultaneously both of these movements exist and exactly how you're going to do both, where you're going to be able to sort of keep your head down but still keep rotating through the golf ball. Start with the head and if you like your eyes first of all. So for golfers who have a tendency to get really stuck through the golf ball and don't rotate, allowing your head to move in the direction where you're going is really really a logical thing to do. And if you imagine that you were going to be sort of throwing a ball or skimming a stone, one of the things that you'll be doing is looking more towards your target as opposed to looking at the object that you're throwing. So moving more this way obviously makes a huge amount of sense. In fact, you'd probably find it more of a hindrance if you didn't do those things. So if you've been given the advice because you're somebody who gets quite stuck to just let your head move through with you, 100% completely logical. Equally, if you're somebody who has a tendency to swing over the top or too much in to out, again, sort of focusing your attention either too much more to the left or to the right of the target to help you with that starting direction, again, is a really logical thing. So if I've got somebody who swings massively over the top, then I'll get them to do some practice swings where they feel like they're swinging more to the right of the target and to visually look more in that area as well. Obviously, that will help you change that sequence in towards the downswing. So first thing I'm agreeing on is you know, if you want to do a Henrik Stenson and actually start looking before you've even hit the golf ball, fine. You might find that's a, an element of test on your coordination, but what I'm suggesting is it will help your rotation through the ball by allowing your head to move through. The problem that we have, however, and why you need to also focus on keeping your head still is because of the orientation of your body. So what isn't acceptable is for me to sort of move like this, where my head would move in this sort of direction. What we need to do is we need to find a way to move more this way. So you can see the way I'm able to allow my eyes to follow the target line, but I'm also doing it in such a way where my head's staying back. To be able to do that, you need to understand one thing, and that is tilt, okay? So if I sort of put my hands across my shoulders here and I demonstrate a tilted motion, that's this. So I'm now rotating my head towards the target whilst maintaining staying in tilt. The more I rotate, the more I look this way, okay? Now, what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna lose that tilt, and that's when the head moves over the upper body. This is a big no-no, because if you start doing this, this is gonna trigger over the top moves, and this is what I tend to see with most amateur golfers who rotate poorly. So the big difference here though is not some sort of contortion of the spine and all this, it's the lower body. So the more I move my lower body to the lead side and I keep my head sort of focused on staying relatively still, the more tilt that's produced. Okay, and the more that I open up and the more that I keep my head still, the more tilt is produced. So you can see my head is going from a position of where my eye line is pretty parallel to the floor to where it's sort of more like parallel towards my pelvis position. And obviously my spine has a bit of bending motion in there in the rib cage as well to help further drop this down to compound the point. But you understand what I'm trying to say. It's a blend of both of these. You can see the way everything is facing towards the target but my head never moves over my lower body because otherwise I lose the tilt and then therefore that would make me swing too much over the top. Now, if we understand those, then what I would do to bring it back into the realms of sort of achievable is to go back to our sort of analogy of skimming a stone. So if I was gonna skim a stone, I'd do two things. One, I would focus on the direction where I'm gonna be sort of throwing the ball or skimming the stone, I should say. And the second one is that I'm gonna try and find a way to get lower towards the ground. And one of the ways you can do this is this type of motion again. Okay, so I need to find a way to drive my trail hand in this sort of area to be able to skim that stone through. And if I move my head this way, then what will happen is it's gonna affect my release. It's not gonna allow me to propel that arm through. It's gonna make me throw it more down in towards the floor. So it's a very simple way that you can start to do this is to pick up on that analogy and do it with the trail hand only. So one of my favorite drills to keep things simple for a lot of my students is just to practice doing some trail hand swings where you get that feeling of it being an underarm action. So see the way my trail arm is pointing up towards the sky. And as you're doing that, just allow your head to move through with you. And as long as you're able to strike down on the ground, then this basically means that you're moving enough towards that lead side. If you're somebody who moves this way, 
then you know that's going to be a problem. These sort of simple drills are what I spend a lot of my time doing with students and it does make a massive difference. Understanding both of these motions with this trail arm will give you that sort of liberty and freedom to move correctly. So to summarise, keeping your head still is a byproduct of the pelvis moving left and allowing your head to move through with you well, that's just logical. I suppose just how much you choose to do that is down to you, which will probably be a test of your coordination, if anything else. See you soon.